Well, we've got a few gaps tonight. I think everybody thought that this is the last service. It was uh, I think I stuffed up that announcement somehow, but that's okay. So if you want to have some close fellowship, you better move in. You know, you guys, come all you backsliders up the back there. You know, come on down here and just come and front slide a little bit. You know, like it's all good. Get down here, and um, I'm going to get um, both. Uh, I'm going to get Ray first of all to come on up, and um, you know, you know, we've we've had an amazing year. We we fare well. Um, officially, um, uh, Ray and Shannon and their children uh, this morning, and uh, as they go to plant a church, uh, Church Untamed in Cromwell. I like that. I roll that round on my tongue, Church Untamed. That's pretty cool. And um, and so they're heading off to Cromwell um, really, really shortly. And um, Garth and Carol are joining our team up in Christchurch, um, Pastor Terry and. Um, People say, they guess they're going to leave such a gap. And I said, yeah, but when I met them, I would have, wouldn't have hired them. <laughs> People forget that. You know, it was really funny. Someone said to me this morning, oh, you know, like, you know, Terry, too, he's amazing. You know, like, you should have let him. I said, yeah, but when I met him, he was in Ward 12. As a patient. He wasn't visiting. He was really broken. And God just brings redemption and love. And if we're and if we're open to that, He redeems us and lifts us. You know the great story I, I, when Carol started to tell a little bit, just a glimpse, because I know all of the story. And when she just began to allude to that a bit on the stage, I just began to weep because I remember her. And 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 it wasn't that she was unlikable; it was just it was anything but. But she just had brokenness in her life. And, and I, I just look around, I go, isn't it a great joy that as a church we can see people made whole? I just And then they and then we make them pastors and leaders and missionaries and send them out. If they're really bad, we send them overseas. It's really good. Just a Lord bless you and keep you far away from me. You know, like it's just not true. not true. But come on, I want you to put your hands together tonight and welcome Ray as he comes. I've got Ray. Uh, is going to speak for a few moments and then Garth's going to speak and, and uh, well, whatever they're figuring out right now. Like you can wrestle for it. Um, and, uh, and, hey, sumo. <laughs> uh, I, uh, Kerry's going to stand in for me, all right? So that's be really, really good to do that kind of stuff. Hey, listen, just before I hand over to them, I just want to honor our musicians at the end of the year because nicely, yeah, come on, do that. Yeah, because they are unbelievably amazing. Come on, that's awesome. You know, we often think it's really easy to stand up here, and it's really not. You know, I was talking to a guy this morning, sit down just for a moment, and uh, he, he, he said to me, I don't know how you do it. Does your leg shake sometimes? I went, yeah, sure. My heart beats faster and, uh, you know, all of that. So I still get nervous every time I stand up in people. The trick is not to let people know. And the other trick is just be yourself. Because there's no use me being someone else. You know, it's just, just got to be yourself. So, And that's what I honor about these guys. They have just been themselves. And what that means is they've come into an identity. And that's awesome. So, Ray, come on. Come and uh, share with us tonight. Let's grab that pulpit up and uh, and uh, do that. Give him a great hand as he comes. And uh, that's going to be fantastic. Thanks, team. That's awesome. Hi, guys. Hi. Hey, um, just want to thank Pastor Ian and Dale for inviting us back as visiting ministry. Um, so good. Um, you know, me and Garth, we were actually thinking it would probably be slightly longer between, uh, you know, leaving and, and being invited back, but um, that's so good. Hopefully it's the first time of many, and, and we're sort of wishing and praying that the, the next time you hear from us, there'll be great reports and stuff, and I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure there will be. Hey. Um, have you ever got to speak at your own wake before? It's a... Uh, it's got that slight feel about it, doesn't it? It's like, um, you know, for the past, I guess, probably a couple of months, our names have been talked about in hushed tones. You know, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. When I'm gone, when I'm gone. No, um, it's fine. Hey, um, I don't know if you know or not, but um, one of the things that happens is obviously with, with me and Garth and Shannon and Carol heading away, it's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a change of generations. 
Like that, that's just one of the things that, that's kind of happening. And um, the really interesting thing is, is that um, it's not so much the fact that this transition that's happening, it's how our reaction to that transition is actually going to determine the outcome. And so, and so I guess um, probably my last words, my, my last will and testament, my last will and testament, um, I just wanted to um, leave you guys with just, just a thought, really. And um, so me, um, I'm a steady personality type, so I've, I'm quite interesting. Under pressure, I'm, I'm, I'm steady. Under pressure, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm just, you know, steady as she goes. You give me a vision and I'll keep going. And it's really interesting going from that steady personality type to now back into the faith zone. We have to move from being that steady person to the innovator again. And so, um, and so that's a really interesting th- thing for me. Like, um, and same with, with my son. My son cries when we put the rubbish out because it's our rubbish. And he's always loved that rubbish. And maybe one day he'll use that rubbish again. I don't know. But he just grows attached to things. But actually, I'm really excited for the next season. So um, the word that I have for tonight is actually life changes, but God doesn't. All right? So... Um, we all have different seasons of life. Some of us are further along in those seasons than others. Like whether you're at high school, whether you're at uni or polytech, whether you're, at, you're working or not working, whether you're married or unmarried or ex-married or whatever that looks like these days, whether you have kids or don't have kids or have 12 dogs or 12 cats or 40 goldfish, I don't know. We're all at different stages of life. And the great thing is, is that... Um, God's with us at every single part of that stage. He's with us in between every transition. So um, I was thinking of, a, like, I guess a, a Bible story that would, sort of, that would sort of help pull that out. And uh, So I wanted to talk to you guys just real briefly about Moses. Moses was awesome, all right? Let me, let me, let me have a wee think about um, Moses for a second. So he um, freed the Israelites, pretty good. Saw God, that's quite good. Got the Ten Commandments, twice even. <laughs> You imagine that conversation? God, I'm really sorry. I threw the first ones at the Israelites. I bet you tried to force them to eat it. Like, you will take this. No. He parted the Red Sea. There was the ten plagues of Egypt. He led uh, led a million people in the desert for a really long period of time. Like, he's basically the man. Like, he, like he he really is. And the thing is, is that who would be, who wants to be Moses? No one. Oh, that's awesome. That's so good. Wow, that's great. That's, that's excellent. Who wants to be Moses? Who wants to be the person who follows Moses? Who would like to follow Moses with a resume like that? So I'm not actually going to talk about Moses tonight. I'm going to talk about Joshua 1. So Joshua, you imagine Joshua. So one of the things when there's a, there's a generation change is that everything gets compared to what used to happen or what used to be. And so um, you imagine the start of Joshua's ministry, so to speak. Joshua 1, verse 1. Moses, the servant of the Lord, died. Moses, your servant, is dead. What a great start for ministry. That's going to be so good. Really encouraging word. Thank you so much for having us, guys. No. After that, the Lord spoke to Joshua. The son of Nun, Joshua was Moses' helper. The Lord said to Joshua, my servant, Moses is dead. Now in this case, it's quite cool because that's where the analogy falls over for us as a church because Moses is still around. But in, a, in another sense, in a, yeah, yeah, yeah. In another sense, both me and Garth are Moseses, hey. And Shannon's a Moses and Carol's a Moses and even the kids are wee tiny Moseses running around. But, um... We're here as visiting ministry right now. We got prayed out this morning. So Moses, your servant is dead. So all of the stuff that Moses carried, all of the ministries that were upheld, all of that stuff is just somewhere. Now if you think about where the, where the, um, where the Israelites are, they're still currently stuck in the desert. The same place that they've been going round and round and round and round and round and round and round for for a really long period of time. And so the great thing is, is that something needed to change. So sometimes a generation needs to die, and it could be a great generation. Like we're, me and Garth, we're an amazing generation. 
good looking. We're a great generation. But actually, sometimes it's great for a generation to die so that there can be a transition and change that takes place or otherwise we'll just keep going round and round and round and round and round and round and round. I mean, the definition of insanity is if you do what you've always done, you get what you've always got. And so Moses, your servant, is dead. Okay, check this out. This is what... um. This is what God says to Joshua. Now then, I want you and all these people to get ready to go across the Jordan River. Wait a minute. So Moses has been going round and round and round and round and round the desert. The first thing that God asks them to do is what Moses was first asked to do anyway. Take my people into the promised land. Like, that was was the mission. I want all of you to go into the land I'm about to give to the people of Israel. So that's great. Now, if that was the only thing that was given to Joshua, that would be, hey, go and do what Moses did. He failed, and he's got a better resume than you. So, good luck with that. But actually, that's not where he leaves it. That's not where God leaves it. I will give you every place you walk on, just as I promised Moses. So the start, this like the ceiling of the next thing is the floor of, no, the ceiling of where Moses went is like the starting point for where Joshua is. Your territory will reach from the Negev Desert all the way to Lebanon. The great Euphrates River will be to the east. The Mediterranean Sea will be to the west. Your territory will include all of the Hittite country. So basically a large section of the known world. Joshua, no one will be able to stand up against you as long as you live. I will be with you just as I was with Moses. This is one of the great things is that the the, the starting point for the promises that God places into Joshua's life is exactly what was spoken over Moses. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Be strong and brave. You will lead these people and they will take the land as their very own. It is the land I promised with an oath to give their people long ago. Be strong and very brave. That's the second time. So um, in different versions it says be strong and courageous. To be strong or courageous would be to continue moving forward. Make sure you obey the whole law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn away from it to the left or to the right. Then you will have success everywhere you go. Never stop reading the scroll of the law day and night. You must think about what it says. Make sure you do everything that is written in it. Then things will go well with you and you will have great success. And here's the final thing that he leaves with, um, with Joshua in this year. Here is what I am commanding you to do, just in case you haven't got the last six verses. <laughs> Be strong and brave. That's the third time. Do not be terrified. Do not be afraid. Do not lose hope. I am the Lord your God. I will be with you wherever you go. Even to the end of the age. There's so many times that it does it. It it says the same thing again and again. Even to the end of time. Even to the, okay. So like a couple of times God just makes up big numbers just so we can't understand. Even to the... No, anyway, it doesn't matter. So, Psalm 62, 6 says, he, is my ro- he, he only is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So what does that mean for us? Well, we're in a season of transition. We're in a season of transition. That's, that's just what's happening. And it's, and it's great and it's exciting because... Me and Garth didn't have to actually die. That's quite, that's quite good. I'll, I'll still take a transfiguration on the mount if, if I have to. It'll be, that'll be kind of cool. But we've actually, got some, we've actually got some options. See, we're Moses. And for the guys that are left behind, um, as Pastor Ian talks about, who are alive and remain, um, you guys can either be the Israelites, you can be Joshua, or you can be Caleb. So how will you respond to the change that was happening? See, Moses was a shepherd. He, he took the Israelites through a period that, um, that they needed that shepherding. They needed babied. They needed, come on guys, just one more time. Whereas Joshua was a general. He was someone who killed giants for a living once he was in the promised land. See, man changes, but God doesn't. You can rely on him. Okay? So there's three options for you guys. I mean, I'm, I mean, Moses, your servant is dead. I can sort of, leave, like, I leave after this and it's okay, so I can just tell it like it is. 
So thank you so much for the opportunity for this one time for visiting ministry. Um. <laughs> See, the thing is, is the Israelites actually had three choices and Joshua had three, cho- three choices. He could either go back to where they came from, which is what the Israelites wanted to do for that first 40 years. Can we not just go back into slavery? It was better when we were slaves. We can go back to the old, the old ways. You know, we can go back to what it was like when Terry was here. We could go back to what it was like when Grant was here. We could go back to what it was like when Lyle was here. We could go back to what it was like when John O'Cook was here. Oh, my goodness. Burning cross on the carpet, just about there. Pastor Lyle, letters every week. <laughs> yeah. He'd throw MCs up. They were still swearing because they were drinking the night before. Yep. <laughs> so we can go back to the old ways, but the old ways is just a type of retrenchment. It's actually it's a shrinking back. And, and, and like my heart is just not to see a shrinking back take place. See, what we could do is we could preserve what we've done like a memorial. Like put a pin around it, put a rope around it. Oh my goodness, do you remember when Garth did that and that strategy was absolutely amazing and we should do that that way until the end of time. Or oh, wow, Ray had, this, Ray had this crazy idea to encourage people to start doing skate ministry and that would be a really good idea and all the youth budget would get used up on repairs as a result of the skaters coming in week in and week out. You, become, you get on first name basis with the principles. Or anything else. It could be frogs, it could be resonate, it could be any of that stuff. It could be one youth, it could be whatever. We could, tr- we could try and freeze and memorialize and preserve what's always been. But actually, Moses, your servant, is dead. That season is... That season is Gone, it's over. And it's okay, to, it's okay to build something that's like a touchstone. As long as it's not a memorial that you camp around for the rest of forever. See, the third option is actually you walk into the promised land with the, with this, the ceiling that we had, which will become the, the floor for what the next generation is going gonna, is gonna to have. Is gonna, like, that's... Like, we literally want you to stand on our shoulders. We literally want you to continue to have greater favor in SIT than we ever saw, and we've got great favor there now. Greater favor in the schools, greater favor in the community, greater favor in, in, in churches around as we continue to get connected, as we continue to operate in the, in the mandate and the mantle that God's given this house as a gathering place, as a watering place, as a place of healing, as a house of the prophetic. See, this isn't just a house that resources us. This is a house that resources an area. This is a community church. And I don't mean community church as in, Bob, I like your family, and Harold, I like your family. I mean an area. So, this is my thought. And it's a short thought, and I'll give Garth a, 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 a crack. And my goodness, I think I might finally actually do a 10-minute sermon after all these years. I need to speak faster. No, um, our heart's always been we wanted to raise a genuine... I oh, oh, see, I'm speaking for you now, Garth. It's okay. it's okay. It's probably all right. You can fix it up in a minute anyway. We've always wanted to raise a gener- generation of Joshua's, generation after generation of people that are walking into the calling that God's placed for them. See, we don't want to see a generation of Rays, and we don't want to see a generation of Garth. We don't even want to see a generation of Ends and Dales, even though all of that would be good. But actually, God's placed a custom-made mandate for you, and you guys are planted in this house, and a result of what you carry can be outworked in the mandate that this house has. So that's that's, that's my thought. Change is part of life. It's our response to transition that determines the outcome. So we want to see you guys do far greater things than we've ever done. See, because at the end of the day, there's a generation of Joshua's sitting out there. There's a generation of Caleb sitting out there who just think that they're Israelites at the moment. So I'm so excited to see you guys rise up. I'm so excited to see you guys fill the gaps. I believe that in this house tonight, there's ministries that haven't even been thought of yet. 
they don't they don't exist in the same in the same way that I like growing up as a teenager you would not work in the computer industry because it didn't exist there's ministries available here right now they're sitting in this place germinating in this place begin to be birthed begin to be grown begin to be um, mentored that those gifts that you've been placed inside of you will be fanned uh, fanned into flame so that when you burn you would not burn out so that's my, that's my heart. God bless you guys. Let you have a double portion of whatever we ever carry. And I'm going to pass you over to Garth because that's it. Yeah, man. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, amen. Hey, I, I, I want to say, um, as I begin, it looks odd having an empty pulpit. <laughs> Um, thank you to all those who uh, played a, a hand in, in creating that great lunch for us today. That was just phenomenal. Great to get together with, with, with friends and family. So, uh, very cool. Moses and the Israelites is a phenomenal story. I, I, Jenna, is, are you here? Jenna, can I get you to come up on the keyboard, please? That would be brilliant. You were playing tonight, weren't you? Yes. Amen. Because um, it's this, this story of a nation that had partnered with a problem and never got to experience the promise that God had for them. And then the next generation, under the leadership of Joshua, said, you know what, we, we, we're through partnering with problems, we're pursuing promises. And they began to step in to, to a freedom that the previous generation had never experienced. And it, uh, there's, there's two things that I would share tonight that really may be things that I've shared before but for me over the, this, this whole season of, of doing life and, 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 and really this is the only church I've ever known in, in an intimate way this is the only place that I've ever fellowshipped I've, I've, I, I haven't often visited anywhere else and there's some key things that I've learned whilst, whilst doing life here and, and, and really they're picked up from one from the life of Moses in Numbers chapter 12 it says of Moses that he was the most humble man on all the earth. Funniest thing about that passage of scripture is that he's got it in brackets and he's written it himself. So, <laughs> wow, this this got a humble state. Is that a, is that is that still count? Is this is it allowed? But it's right in this this time frame where Aaron and Miriam, who Aaron's Moses' brother and Miriam's Aaron's wife. And they get it in their hearts and say, you know what? Isn't God able to speak to us also? And so they, they, they revolt really against Moses and begin to complain about him. But the Lord hears and, and, and calls them all out. And he says, why weren't you afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Don't you know that I meet with him face to face and I don't speak to him in riddles? Wow. Ever since I read that, passage of scripture I thought you know what I, I actually want to be like Moses in, in that sense that I could meet with God face to face that when he speaks to me it wouldn't be with, with riddles or things that are hard to understand or too hard to comprehend or obtain but the simplicity of two people meeting together and having a conversation because they're in relationship I went, wow how does that work and as you read through the, 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 the scripture, you, you find that humility is the greatest key to intimacy. And humility is not this self-defacing kind of mindset that says I'm, I'm weak and I'm small and I'm tiny and I'm not good enough and I'm unable. But it's this, this, this huge engine on the inside of us that says, you know what? I've got a God who is able to do anything. And, and I'm not afraid or ashamed to come into the grace that He's provided for me and say, God, if nothing's impossible for you and I'm made in your image and your likeness, then the reality is that nothing is impossible for me. Apart from you, I can do nothing. But with you, I can do everything. And it's an acknowledgement. Humility is the acknowledgement of the reality of God in our world. 
The second thing that I would say is that freedom has become a huge part of my life. Uh, both the story of, of Carol and myself, Carol's my wife, if you, if, if, for those of you who may not know, are, are, are really stories of coming out of places of, of, of great bondage and, and, and addiction into a place of absolute freedom. But the journey's never ending. And it's the same for the Israelites as they operated under Moses. that would come out of 450 odd years of, of slavery. But they never lost their, their victim mentality. When they said that to Moses, why did you lead us out into the desert so that we would die? Weren't we better off eating our leeks and our onions in Egypt? Sure, you've parted the Red Sea. Sure, there's a pillar of fire by day. Sure, there's a pillar of cloud by, by, oh, a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Sure, our clothes aren't wearing out. Sure, we're seeing miracles and, 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 and water's coming from rocks and, 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 and there's enough of it to, consume, to, to quench the thirst of, na- of a nation. But weren't we better off in slavery? And then under the guidance of Joshua, because I, I, I don't know what their mindset was. It was like, wow, we're, 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 we're so used to being in captivity. We're so used to living under oppression that we don't know what to do with the freedom that we've been given. And then under the leadership of Joshua, he said, you know, we can't just sit around. I, I, I've had this Joshua and Caleb. We've had this dream in our hearts, this desire for 40 years. We had to wait for a whole generation to die out before we get to ex- got to experience the freedom and the promise that God had for us. If freedom is not, or a destiny is not automatic, and sometimes we have to fight for our freedom. I love Galatians 5, chapter 1, for, it's for freedom that Christ set us free. The, the freedom that God gives us, the, it's like there's no agenda to it. He's so revels, he's, he, he's so ecstatic, he's so joyful about the freedom that he wants to lead us into that he doesn't have to put any parameters around it. He just so enjoys seeing his children live free. You know, this, actually, let's get all the musos up right now. That'd be good. Um, we're about to finish. One of my favorite movies of all time, which is actually quite an old movie now, was Braveheart. Remember, remember Braveheart? You know, I remember when it came out at the movie theater. I was working at McDonald's at the time. I must have been fresh out of school. So maybe it was like, what, 95 or 94, 95. And at that time still, I had really stepped into this journey of addiction and, 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 and all kinds of crazy stuff. But my dad had rung me and said, hey, son, why would you like to go to the movies? There's this new movie on. I think you might enjoy it. And I went, oh, I really didn't want to go with my dad because I knew that if I went with him that I, wouldn't, I wasn't going to be able to be high because he would pick up on that and just be awkward, awkward, awkward. So, but I said yes, and he came and he picked me up. We went to the movies, and, and, and it was great. And I remember watching it. I was like, wow, this was a fantastic movie. This was great. But there's that line in the, there's that scene in there where for the first time, all the Highland clans gather together, and they come and array themselves on the battlefield and the English army's over there and the, the, the Scottish lords and nobles are gathered together and they're freaking out going, well, what are we going to do? We can't really fight them. Let's, look, let's go and negotiate. Let's go and negotiate for better lands and better titles and, and less taxes and, and at least if we negotiate with the enemy, we might get a little bit less oppression. But true freedom doesn't negotiate for less taxes. True freedom doesn't negotiate for a little bit less oppression. And then William Wallace comes on the scene and they kind of mock him. They say, he goes, I am William Wallace. Well, I heard he was seven feet tall. 
yeah, well, if he was here, he would consume the, the English with fireballs from his eyes and bolts of lightning from somewhere else. But I am William Wallace. And he begins to give this great speech on, on, on you know, I, I see before me a whole army of my countrymen ready to, to gather together in the face of tyranny and oppression. And, you know, and he says, will, will, will you fight? One of the guys in the scene goes, no, we, we won't. We, we'll run. And we'll live. We'll not fight that. And William's response is, I fight and you'll die. Oh, no, fight and you might die. Run and you'll live. But lying on your deathbeds, many years from now, would you be willing to trade all the days from this day to that for one chance, just one chance to come back here and tell our enemies that they may take our lives, but they will never take our freedom. And there's cheering and loud noises. Oh, yeah. And this little Irish friend comes up to him and goes, great speech. What are we going to do now? He says, I'm going to go and pick a fight. Because freedom doesn't settle for less oppression. Freedom doesn't settle for less taxes or greater titles. Freedom does what freedom is. And one of the greatest lessons I've learned in walking with Jesus is that the expression of our freedom will help set other people free. I don't really know where to go with this now, I'm sure. Um, you know, well, amen. We're going we're, we're gonna to get the Musos to, to do free, that freedom song. That would be, that'd be really cool. And if you're here tonight, we're going to pass it back to Pastor Ian, but I, 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 just, I just feel this. I, I, I need to pray for some people. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't know, I don't care uh, who you are. Uh, but I'm going to be declaring freedom of your life. So um, I'm going to hand it back. And, and, and just when the altar's open, just, just run down. We'll pray for you. Amen.